Sail. A sail is a tensile structure made from fabric or other membrane materials that uses wind power to propel sailing craft, including sailing ships, sailboats, windsurfers, ice boats, and even sail-powered land vehicles. Sails may be made from a combination of woven materials including canvas or polyester cloth, laminated membranes or bonded filaments usually in a three- or four-sided shape. A sail provides propulsive force via a combination of lift and drag, depending on its angle of attack its angle with respect to the apparent wind. Apparent wind is the air velocity experienced on the moving craft, and is the combined effect of the true wind velocity with the velocity of the sailing craft. Angle of attack is often constrained by the sailing craft's orientation to the wind or point of sail. On points of sail where it is possible, to align the leading edge of the sail with the apparent wind. The sail may act as an airfoil, generating propulsive force as air passes along its surface, just as an airplane wing generates lift which predominates over aerodynamic drag retarding forward motion. The more that the angle of attack diverges from the apparent wind as a sailing craft turns downwind, the more drag increases and lift decreases as propulsive forces until a sail going downwind is predominated by drag forces. Sails are unable to generate propulsive force if they are aligned too closely to the wind. Sails may be attached to a mast, boom, or other spar or may be attached to a wire that is suspended by a mast. They are typically raised by a line, called a halyard and their angle with respect to the wind is usually controlled by a line called a sheet. In use, they may be designed to be curved in both directions along their surface, often as a result of their curved edges. Battens may be used to extend the trailing edge of a sail beyond the line of its attachment points. Other non-rotating airfoils that power sailing craft include wing sails, which are rigid wing-like structures and kites that power kite-rigged vessels but do not employ a mast to support the airfoil and are beyond the scope of this article. Rigs Rigs Sailing craft employ two types of rig, the square rig and the fore and aft rig. The square rig carries the primary driving sails on horizontal spars, which are perpendicular or square, to the keel of the vessel and to the masts. These spars are called yards, and their tips, beyond the last stay, are called the yard arms. A ship mainly so rigged is called a square rigger. The square rig is aerodynamically most efficient when running sailing downwind. A fore and aft rig consists of sails that are set along the line of the keel rather than perpendicular to it. Vessels so rigged are described as fore and aft rigged. History Archaeological studies of the Cucutini Tripillion culture ceramics show use of sailing boats from the 6th millennium BC onwards. Excavations of the Ubaid period c. 6000-4000 300 BC in Mesopotamia provide direct evidence of sailing boats. Square rigs. Sails from ancient Egypt are depicted around 3200 BC, where reed boats sailed upstream against the river Nile's current. Ancient Sumerians used square rigged sailing boats at about the same time, and it is believed they established sea trading routes as far away as the Indus Valley. Greeks and Phoenicians began trading by ship by around 1200 BC. Crab Claw Rigs The first seagoing sailing ships were developed by the Austronesian peoples from what is now southern China and Taiwan. Their invention of catamarans outriggers and the highly efficient bispar triangular crab claw sails enabled their ships to sail for vast distances in open ocean. It led to the Austronesian expansion at around 3000 to 1500 BC. From Taiwan, they rapidly settled the islands of maritime Southeast Asia, then sailed further onwards to Micronesia, island Melanesia, Polynesia, and Madagascar, eventually settling a territory spanning half the globe. The Proto-Austronesian words for sail, layer, 
and other rigging parts date to about 3000 BC when this group began their Pacific expansion. Austronesian rigs were distinctive in that they had spars supporting both the upper and lower edges of the sails and sometimes in between, in contrast to western rigs which only had a spar on the upper edge. The sails were also made from salt-resistant woven leaves, usually from pandan plants. Crab claw sails used with single outrigger ships in Micronesia, Island Melanesia, Polynesia, and Madagascar were intrinsically unstable when tacking leeward. To deal with this, Austronesians in these regions developed the shunting technique in sailing in conjunction with uniquely reversible single outriggers. In the rest of Austronesia, crab claw sails were mainly for double outrigger trimarans and double hulled catamarans boats, which remained stable even leeward. In Western Island Southeast Asia, Later square sails also evolved from the crab claw sail, the tanya and the junk rig, both of which retained the Austronesian characteristic of having more than one spar supporting the sail. Junk rigs were later adopted by the Chinese Song dynasty in the 10th century CE from contact with Srivijayan trading ships, known as Kunlun ships in Chinese records. Latin rigs In the Mediterranean, single-yarded Latin sails emerged by around the 2nd century CE. Though its origin remains contentious, it is believed that it developed from early contact with Southeast Asian Austronesian trading ships in the Indian Ocean with crab claw sails. The fore and aft rig began as a convention of Southern Europe and the Mediterranean Sea. The generally gentle climate made its use practical and in Italy a few centuries before the Renaissance it began to replace the square rig which had dominated all of Europe since the dawn of sea travel. Northern Europeans were resistant to adopting the fore and aft rig, despite having seen its use in the course of trade and during the Crusades. The Renaissance changed this beginning in 1475, their use increased, and within a hundred years the fore and aft rig was in common use on rivers and in estuaries in Britain, northern France, and the Low Countries, though the square rig remained standard for the harsher conditions of the open North Sea, as well as for transatlantic sailing. The Latin sail proved to have better upwind performance for smaller vessels. During the 16th-19th centuries other fore and aft sails were developed in Europe, such as the sprit sail, gaff rig, jib, Genoa staysail, and Bermuda rig mainsail, improving the upwind sailing ability of European vessels. Aerodynamic forces Aerodynamic forces on sails depend on wind speed and direction and the speed and direction of the craft. The direction that the craft is traveling with respect to the true wind, the wind direction and speed over the surface is called the point of sail. The speed of the craft at a given point of sail contributes to the apparent wind VA, the wind speed and direction as measured on the moving craft. The apparent wind on the sail creates a total aerodynamic force, which may be resolved into drag the force component in the direction of the apparent wind and lift the force component normal nitidic to the apparent wind. Depending on the alignment of the sail with the apparent wind, lift or drag may be the predominant propulsive component. Total aerodynamic force also resolves into a forward, propulsive, driving force resisted by the medium through or over which the craft is passing e.g. through water, air, or over ice, sand and a lateral force, resisted by the underwater foils, ice runners, or wheels of the sailing craft. For apparent wind angles aligned with the entry point of the sail, the sail acts as an airfoil and lift is the predominant component of propulsion. For apparent wind angles behind the sail, lift diminishes and drag increases as the predominant component of propulsion. For a given true wind velocity over the surface, a sail can propel a craft to a higher speed on points of sail when the entry point of the sail is aligned with the apparent wind than it can with the entry point not aligned. Because of limitations on speed through the water, displacement sailboats generally derive power from sails generating lift on points of sail that include close hold through broad reach approximately 4 tidig to 135 deg off the wind. Because of low friction over the surface and high speeds over the ice that create high apparent wind speeds for most points of sail, iceboats can derive power from lift further off the wind than displacement boats.
down when sailing with a spinnaker. Types Each rig is configured in a sail plan appropriate to the size of the sailing craft. A sail plan is a set of drawings usually prepared by a naval architect which shows the various combinations of sail proposed for a sailing ship. Sail plans may vary for different wind conditions light to heavy. Both square-rigged and fore- and aft-rigged vessels have been built with a wide range of configurations for single and multiple masts. Types of sail that can be part of a sail plan can be broadly classed by how they are attached to the sailing craft. Two a stay sails attached to stays include jibs, which are attached to forestays stays and stay sails, which are mounted on other stays, typically wire cable, that support other masts from the bow aft. To a mast fore and aft sails directly attached to the mast at the luff include gaff rigged quadrilateral and Bermuda triangular sails. To a spar sails attached to a spar include both square sails and such fore and aft quadrilateral sails as lug rigs, junk and sprit sails and such triangular sails as the latine and the crab claw. To a halyard spinnakers are the predominant sail supported solely by a halyard. High performance yachts, including the International C Class Catamaran, have used or use rigid wing sails, which perform better than traditional soft sails but are more difficult to manage. A rigid wing sail was used by Stars and Stripes, the defender which won the 1988 America's Cup, and by U.S. Aminist 17 the Challenger which won the 2010 America's Cup. USA 17's performance during the 2010 America's Cup races demonstrated a velocity made good upwind of over twice the wind speed and downwind of over 2.5 times the wind speed. Shape The shape of a sail is defined by its edges and corners in the plane of the sail, laid out on a flat surface. The edges may be curved, either to extend the sail's shape as an airfoil or to define its shape in use. In use, the sail becomes a curved shape, adding the dimension of depth or draft. Edges the top of all sails is called the head. The leading edge is called the luff on fore and aft sails, and on windward leech symmetrical sails, the trailing edge is the leech, and the bottom edge is the foot. The head is attached at the throat and peak to a gaff yard or sprit. For a triangular sail, the head refers to the topmost corner. A fore and aft triangular mainsail achieves a better approximation of a wing form by extending the leech aft beyond the line between the head and clue on an arc called the roach, rather than having a triangular shape. This added area would flutter in the wind and not contribute to the efficient airfoil shape of the sail. Offshore cruising mainsails sometimes have a hollow leech the inverse of a roach to obviate the need for battens and their ensuing likelihood of chafing the sail. The roach on a square sail design is the arc of a circle above a straight line from clue to clue at the foot of a square sail, which allows the foot of the sail to clear stays coming up the mast as the sails are rotated from side to side. Corners, the names of corners of sails vary depending on shape and symmetry. In a triangular sail, the corner where the luff and the leech connect is called the head. On a square sail, the top corners are head cringles, where there are grommets called cringles. On a quadrilateral sail, the peak is the upper aft corner of the sail, at the top end of a gaff or other spar. The throat is the upper forward corner of the sail, at the bottom end of a gaff or other spar. Gaff rigged sails and certain similar rigs employ two halyards to raise the sails, the throat halyard raises the forward throat end of the gaff, while the peak halyard raises the aft peak end. The corner where the leech and foot connect is called the clue on a fore and aft sail. On a jib, the sheet is connected to the clue. On a mainsail, the sheet is connected to the boom if present near the clue. Clues are the lower two corners of a square sail. Square sails have sheets attached to their clues like triangular sails, but the sheets are used to pull the sail down to the yard below rather than to adjust the angle it makes with the wind. The corner where the leech and the foot connect is called the clue. The corner on a fore and aft sail where the luff and foot connect is called the tack and on a main sail is located where the boom and mast connect. In the case of a symmetrical spinnaker, 
each of the lower corners of the sail is a clue. However, under sail on a given tack, the corner to which the spinnaker sheet is attached is called the clue, and the corner attached to the spinnaker pole is referred to as the tack. On a square sail underway, a tack is the windward clue, and also the line holding down that corner. Draft those triangular sails that are attached to both a mast along the luff and a boom along the foot have depth called draft, which results from the luff and foot being curved, rather than straight as they are attached to those spars. Draft creates a more efficient airfoil shape for the sail. Draft can also be induced in triangular staysails by adjustment of the sheets and the angle from which they reach the sails. Material Sail characteristics derive, in part, from the design, construction, and the attributes of the fibers, which are woven together to make the sail cloth. There are several key factors in evaluating a fiber for suitability in weaving a sail cloth. Both the initial cost and its durability of the material define its cost effectiveness over time. Traditionally, sails were made from flax or cotton canvas. Materials used in sails, as of the 21st century, include nylon for spinnakers where light weight and elastic resistance to shock load are valued, and a range of fibers used for triangular sails. That includes Dacron, aramid fibers including Kevlar, and other liquid crystal polymer fibers including Vectran. Woven materials like Dacron may specified as either high or low tenacity, as indicated in part by their denier count a unit of measure for the linear mass density of fibers. Construction Cross-cut sails have the panels sewn parallel to one another, often parallel to the foot of the sail, and are the least expensive of the two sail constructions. Triangular cross-cut sail panels are designed to meet the mast and stay at an angle from either the warp or the weft on the bias to allow stretching along the luff, but minimize stretching on the luff and foot, where the fibers are aligned with the edges of the sail. Radial sails have panels that radiate from corners in order to efficiently transmit stress and are typically higher performance than cross-cut sails. A biradial sail has panels radiating from two of three corners. A triradial sail has panels radiating from all three corners. Main sails are more likely to be biradial, since there is very little stress at the tack, whereas head sails, spinnakers, and jibs are more likely to be triradial because they are tensioned at their corners. Higher performance sails may be laminated, constructed directly from multiple plies of filaments, fibers, taffetas and films instead of woven textiles and adhered together. Molded sails are laminated sails formed over a curved mold and adhered together into a shape that does not lie flat. Conventional sail panels are sewn together. Sails are tensile structures, so the role of a seam is to transmit a tensile load from panel to panel. For a sewn textile sail this is done through thread and is limited by the strength of the thread and the strength of the hole in the textile through which it passes. Sail seams are often overlapped between panels and sewn with zigzag stitches that create many connections per unit of seam length. Whereas textiles are typically sewn together, other sail materials may be ultrasonically welded, a technique whereby high-frequency ultrasonic acoustic vibrations are locally applied to workpieces being held together under pressure to create a solid-state weld. It is commonly used for plastics, and especially for joining dissimilar materials. Sails feature reinforcements of fabric layers where lines attach at grommets or cringles. A bolt rope may be sewn onto the edges of a sail to reinforce it, or to fix the sail into a groove in the boom, in the mast, or in the luff foil of a roller furling jib. They may have stiffening features, called battens, that help shape the sail, when full length or just the roach when present. They may have a variety of means of reefing them, reducing sail area, including rows of short lines affixed to the sail to wrap up unused sail, as on square and gaff rigs, or simply grommets through which a line or a hook may pass, as on Bermuda mainsails. Fore and aft sails may have telltale pieces of yarn, thread, or tape, that are affixed to sails to help visualize airflow over their surfaces. Comparison of jib panel construction 
running rigging, mm -hmm. rigging, the lines that attach to and control sails are part of the running rigging and differ between square and fore and aft rigs. Some rigs shift from one side of the mast to the other, e.g. the dipping lug sail and the lateen. The lines can be categorized as those that support the sail, those that shape it, and those that control its angle to the wind. Fore and aft rigged vessels Fore and aft rigged vessels have rigging that supports, shapes and adjusts the sails to optimize their performance in the wind, which include the following lines. Supporting halyards raise sails and control luff tension. Topping lifts hold booms and yards aloft. On a gaff sail, rails run from the leech to the spar to facilitate furling. Shaping barber haulers adjust a spinnaker slash jib sheeting angle inboard at right angles to the sheet with a ring or clip on the sheet attached to cordage which is secured and adjusted by a fair lead and cam cleat. Kicking straps slash boom vangs control a boom footed sails leech tension by exerting downward force mid boom. Cunninghams tighten the luff of a boom footed sail by pulling downward on a cringle in the luff of a mainsail above the tack. Downhauls lower a sail or a yard and can adjust the tension on the luff of a sail. Outhauls control the foot tension of a boom footed sail. Adjusting angle to the wind sheets control angle of attack with respect to the apparent wind, the amount of leech twist near the head of the sail, and the foot tension of loose footed sails. A preventer attaches to the end of the boom from a point near the mast to prevent an accidental jibe. Guys control spinnaker pole angle with respect to the apparent wind. Square rigged vessels. Square rigged vessels require more controlling lines than four and aft rigged ones including the following. Supporting halyards raise and lower the yards. Brails run from the leech to the spar to facilitate furling. Bunt lines serve to raise the foot up for shortening sail or for furling. Lifts adjust the tilt of a yard to raise or lower the ends off the horizontal. Leech lines run to the leech outer vertical edges of a sail and serve to pull the leech both in and up when furling. Shaping bowlines run from the leech forward towards the bow to control the weather leech, keeping it taut and thus preventing it from curling back on itself. Clue lines raise the clues to the yard above. Adjusting angle to the wind braces adjust the fore and aft angle of a yard, i.e. to rotate the yard laterally fore and aft around the mast. Sheets attach to the clue to control the sail's angle to the wind. Tacks haul the clue of a square sail forward. Gallery Sails on high-performance sailing craft Sails on craft subject to low forward resistance and high lateral resistance typically have full-length battens. Legend 